The blood washed away, but the guilt never does. Welcome to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. The murder of Maddie Soto. We're, of course, watching it very closely here. What's going on with who's being charged so far? Just Stefan Stearns, who was the stepdad type figure in her life. Jen Soto, not charged with anything. In fact, she even has some immunity going on in some of the other interviews that she's given. And we have that audio on the channel uh, as well. Joining me to discuss a very specific interview that was done with Stefan Stearns' parents, which I found to be one of the most telling. Javon Scott, psychotherapist uh, and author. There's a lot to unpack in that piece of audio. And if someone wants to hear it, it is on the channel. You can find it there. Stefan Stern's parents interview. Um, let's just kind of, you got a chance to listen to the whole thing. Uh, just off the bat, what were some of your initial reactions? Yeah, I felt like I really learned a lot. It, it filled in the blanks. And it, again, just they started off with Jen being bipolar and having lots of medication and, you know, using cannabis all the time, they mm -hmm. said. And that would really, I think, help explain why she was not noticing how tuned out she was, that both she and Stefan would sleep all day long. She couldn't hold jobs. And, you know, that again, we were wondering, how could she not notice? And I think if this is accurate, this is a lady that really was was not noticing all kinds of things. And so that that made sense to me. But, you know, of course, they mostly talked about their son. And I felt they were very honest, mm -hmm. you know, brutally honest. But these are people that have obviously struggled with how do we parent this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, for years, they were still paying his rent, paying his phone bill. And at times he would periodically go home. And they were really describing someone that it seems to me has a pretty severe neurodevelopmental problem. He never developed into a functional adult. And I think we could say that it's very likely that being run over by a truck twice when he was eight years old, um, the truck ran over him and then backed up. <laughs> And the mother said it hit his head and ran over his head the second time. Um, I think this left some damage. And that would account for all the different things they talked about. Whenever his lips are moving, uh, he was lying. And it made me think of someone who, because he never developed functionally, he made his way through life with manipulation. Mm -hmm. And I think he chose um, a relationship with Jen for a variety of reasons, but probably near the top of the list was he was attracted to Maddie. And by picking a vulnerable woman, that gave him access to her daughter. Let's talk about uh, some points that you just made there. The uh, truck running him over when he was seven years old, twice. Um, I mean, now that we know the rest of the story, it's a shame it just didn't finish the job. Then Maddie wouldn't have have, have been dead or um, or been abused for all those years. But uh, when someone has some sort of trauma like that happen to them, does it stunt their growth? Does it stunt them mentally and keep them essentially at a seven year old level? I mean, explain that a little bit more to me, how that that can have a, a big impact on neurodevelopment. It sure can. And it's, again, like all things with the brain, you can never really predict when someone has a traumatic brain injury, how is this going to impact them? Uh, but we do know that people in prison, if you do their life history, a huge percentage of them have had a traumatic brain injury. And it, it increases impulsiveness. It increases poor judgment. Uh, it can affect IQ. And I think in his case, it affected all of the above. Now, that doesn't mean he's psychotic. He still knew right from wrong. He knew how to attempt to cover his tracks. But even going back into childhood, he was always in special ed classes. And if he had not been run over by a truck, he might have had a better life. Yeah. Does it affect someone's sexual desires? Uh, you know, if you're stunted at seven... Are you still thinking like a seven year old in, in terms of that where when you're you know seven and whatever it, it, it first grade, whatever that is like, oh, she's pretty or he's cute. Whatever, you know how little kids are, little crushes here and there. Are they yeah. still having those same desires for those same aged people? I think that's a really good speculation. I, I don't think we can prove it, but we do see a pattern with sex offenders who are attracted to children. Often they're immature in so many ways they feel inadequate and insecure with normal functioning adult women, mm -hmm. and they just connect better with kids because they're on that level. Yeah. So that certainly can be a part of it. 
with Stefan kind of living the life that he did earlier on, and I'm trying to just dig in and try to understand this this monster that that we see. Yeah. Um, when someone has those sort of traumas that take place, obviously he was probably a kid that got picked on a lot. He was probably a kid that was kind of on the outside, never quite fit in. You can just tell that, that that's very likely what his childhood was like. Is it also a, a thing where they they are interested in children because they're not being judged because it's easier to 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 fit in with them when you're an adult than you yeah. were when you were a child and and there's less yeah there's less judgment going on and, and there's less resistance there uh, than than they would have with their own peers. Yeah, and particularly when you have a child that's needy mm. because they're not being terribly well parented, they're vulnerable. And guys like this, they have a radar for needy kids. And I just want to reiterate, I'm not saying that this excuses no, him. I'm no. not saying he shouldn't go to prison because of it, because in truth, he is a monster. Yeah. And he had awareness that this was wrong. He sure. knew it was illegal and he knew he would get in trouble if he was caught for it. But I also think, you know, his his parents described him as spending, you know, from adolescence into his current life, spending hours and hours locked away in his dark room online. And I think we can make a pretty good guess about what he was doing online. And I think he became sexually compulsive, attracted to kids, and all all these factors together just created an, an awful person who was really dangerous to someone like like Maddie and and a mom who was just not observant. You're in the thick of a true crime saga, every detail sinking in, and then wham, a commercial about something you couldn't care less about. It's like being served a microwaved dinner at a five-star restaurant. But it doesn't have to be this way. Go for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get uninterrupted, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that dig even deeper into the muck, and early access so you can brag to your friends. It's like ordering the secret menu at a crime buffet. So, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and savor every twisted detail without interruption.